South Africa signs 93 economic and trade deals with China, worth over $1.7 billion. China is South Africa's biggest trading partner and biggest investor. But South Africa's deepening ties with China have other consequences. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. China has been cozying up to South Africa for a long time. But like just about everything in life, that chummy economic and trade relationship has unforeseen consequences. And to take viewers on a deeper dive into China's growing presence in South Africa is Shelley Zhang, who traveled to Johannesburg. Thanks, Chris. As soon as I landed in South Africa, signs of China-Africa cooperation were everywhere. Since 2010, China has been South Africa's biggest trade partner. Now China is also South Africa's single biggest investor. China clearly sees South Africa, with its development, infrastructure, and location, as a gateway to the rest of the continent. And the two countries are in the middle of a pretty intense honeymoon period. But there are already signs that the relationship could easily go sour. In June 2019, China and South Africa signed 93 economic and trade cooperation deals worth $1.7 billion. That was also when Chinese leader Xi Jinping and South African President Cyril Ramaphosa met during the G20 summit in Japan. And the South African president grabbed Xi Jinping's chest while Putin looked on? What is going on here? Please, don't tell me. But it's clear that Xi and Ramaphosa have a connection. I mean, Xi Jinping looks almost happy. Maybe that's because he knows that President Ramaphosa and his political party, the ANC, are strong supporters of the Chinese Communist Party. In fact, back in 2015, the ANC called the Chinese Communist Party a guiding lodestar for the ANC because of their economic reforms in China. And the support goes both ways. China's ambassador to South Africa said that President Cyril Ramaphosa is the last hope of this country. That's in reference to Ramaphosa's drive to bring in $100 billion of new investment to lift South Africa's economy out of a slump. And most of what they've raised so far is from, you guessed it, China. Like the $2.5 billion loan to the heavily indebted state-owned power company, ESCOM. But a big focus for the two countries is trade, like those 93 trade agreements I mentioned earlier. One thing these deals are supposed to do is to fix a trade imbalance between the two countries. Currently, about 85% of what China buys from South Africa are minerals and metals. They're sucking up South Africa's natural resources. And what does China sell to South Africa? Manufactured goods. Like here at Johannesburg's China Mall or at Oriental Plaza, where you can get a bargain on China green tea, or communist Che Guevara shirts, or random cookware. I'm not a big fan. While this is great for China, it's less great for South Africa, since cheap imports can affect local industries. That's a structural imbalance that South Africa's trade minister wants to reset. Most of the imported goods at places like China Mall are from small mom and pop businesses, there are around half a million Chinese people in South Africa. At first, most immigrants were actually Taiwanese. They came from Taiwan in the 1970s and 80s, when South Africa had an official relationship with Taiwan. Then, starting 20 years ago, they were replaced by economic migrants from mainland China. Now, these small mom-and-pop importers are leaving. I talked to several who told me that business just isn't what it used to be. But as these small Chinese entrepreneurs leave, they're being replaced by the Chinese state. That is, huge Chinese state-owned enterprises and big businesses supported by the state. Which is why South Africa is getting its 5G infrastructure from, you guessed it, Huawei. The other Huawei. Another example is state-owned Beijing Automotive Industrial Corporation's new auto assembly plant in Port Elizabeth. The company, known by its acronym BIKE, is supposed to source around 30% of auto components from local companies. Does the auto manufacturing benefit South Africa? Sure. And it's beginning now already to make a difference to the employment situation of young people. 
But the auto plant, which can source the remaining 70 percent of car components from outside of South Africa, could provide outsized benefits for China. When a Chinese company partners with a South African company and manufactures here in South Africa, a great opportunity is presented to export duty-free into the rest of the African continent, into the European Union, and into the United States through our favorable trade agreements. So basically, Chinese companies can exploit South Africa's free or near-free market access to flood the rest of the continent, as well as Europe and the U.S., with cheap cars that could be assembled mostly from parts made in China. But it's not just about trade and investment. China and South Africa are also cooperating, along with Russia, on military exercises, part of the PLA's goal to develop a Blue Water Navy. And South African police are also being trained in China. But perhaps the biggest potential problem with South Africa's growing ties to China is political influence by the Chinese Communist Party. Like when South Africa's president recently came out in defense of Huawei, and he blasted the U.S. as backwards thinking and jealous in its fight against the company. Because the United States has been unable, has been unable to imagine a better future which goes beyond 4 plus 1 G. <laughs> Where they've been a unable to imagine what 5G can offer, that a jealous that a Chinese company called Huawei has outstripped them. So clearly, South Africa does not share America's security concerns. Meanwhile, back in 2017, the South African Minister of Public Service and Administration lavished praise on Xi Jinping's book on socialism for a new era and called him the most powerful leader on earth and also very humble. President Xi Jinping's words surpasses in the value even the most precious of metal. I guess that's why South Africa is giving its precious medals to China in exchange for Xi Jinping's very valuable words. Now, it's interesting that if you look for information on China and South Africa's relationship, you don't find that many critical opinions. Maybe that's because they're still on their honeymoon, so everything's still going well. Or maybe it's because China is buying African media silence. A columnist at a South African paper was fired after writing an opinion piece about the Uyghurs, the Turkic Muslim minority being put in concentration camps in China. Turns out that South African media company was partly owned by Chinese state-linked investors. Or this, a scholar at a South African university was told that he would not receive a visa to enter China until his classroom lectures contain more praise for Beijing. And here's my own experience. As I was planning my trip to South Africa, I tried to set up an interview with a local expert on China-South Africa relations, like I did in Greece and Italy. Strangely, I couldn't find anyone who wanted to talk to me. In fact, I was even ghosted a few times. And then I found out that right after my trip, one of the biggest universities in Johannesburg was hosting a conference on China, sponsored by the university's Confucius Institute. Suddenly, many things became clear. Like I said earlier, China and South Africa are still in their honeymoon stage. We'll have to keep watching to see what happens next. Thanks, Shelley. So what do you think about China's growing ties with South Africa? Leave your comments below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.